The line score. We're in the fourth inning, so the game is not uh, an official ball game yet. Twins lead three nothing on the home run by Kirby Puckett, Jimmy Esposito, and his grounds crew putting uh, on the tarpaulin here. Uh, we mentioned earlier that it was raining fairly hard over in Jersey. We knew it was coming this way, and it is here now. And you hope that uh, it's just a quick shower, and we'll uh, just get through quickly. But on the other hand, with the Yankees down three nothing and with the tough left-hander Frank Viola out on the mound Phil Rizzuto I think would like to see it four yes uh, you know Viola well unless this rain hurts him a little bit and unfortunately it's starting to let up uh, a little bit but uh, Viola has certainly improved I mean I remember when he first came he was a good pitcher but he didn't have the poise he has now I, he has been changing up tonight and has had all the, the not all the Yankee hitters, but most of them way off balance. He's split, I think, at least four bats that I know of. He's already broken. They're way out in front and hitting the ball off the end of the bat. Well, Rasmussen was doing that, too, until he hung that uh, curve ball to Puckett. Well, uh, Viola's done an especially good job against Ricky Henderson with change-ups. Ricky, and uh, when uh, Winfield was up there, too, he got Dave to break his bat right in half, hit it right off the end of the bat. So Here's the guy we were just talking about up there, Harmon Gillibrew. Hey, Harmon, come on down. Five, a 573 home runs, and uh, Reggie's chasing him, of course. Uh, Reggie, I guess, takes for granted. Why don't you come on down? Where am I going to put him? No, Bill Scooter. wants to talk to Reggie, him. Why? Reggie is taking for granted that he's going to. Uh, Pass, Harmon? To, to uh, surpass Manley. He needs just a couple more to surpass Manley. Next guy, of course, is. Uh, is Killer Bruno. Now you saw Harmon play. Uh, oh, big, man. big, strong fellow. I tell you, he, he, was, he hit the ball on the upswing. He hit home runs the way Babe Ruth used to hit him. And I saw the great Babe, late great Babe Ruth, hit home runs. He hit towering home runs. And when they started out, just like Killer Bruno, it looked like it was going to be a long fly to the outfield. But then it would just keep carrying and go into the seats. And Harmon, as you know, around the circuit, they've got seats marked where he has hit tremendous home runs. And uh, I mean, it's just uh, an unbelievable distance that he has hit them. But he did one thing Harmon, well, all great sluggers have done it. Except for Ted Williams, strike out a lot. Is that right? Well, yes, he did. Did you strike, strike out, out a lot? I wasn't a slugger. Yes, you I was, were. I was what they call a 200 pound ping hitter. <laughs> no, you <laughs> No, you what was the most home you hit in I one don't year? know. 27. 27. 27. Listen to that. Ping how many how ping. many you hit in your career? Forget it now. Oh, I hit okay. a little more than you hit in one year, but that's beside the point. But most Sluggers do strike out a lot, as I say, except Ted Williams. Well, Ted didn't, didn't swing, it was a ball. Yeah, you're right there. He did <laughs> get a lot of... DiMaggio didn't strike out uh, very often. Well, DiMaggio, the, the thing about DiMaggio, he didn't take that long stride. He just planted that left foot. The right. foot wouldn't let it stay there. It was hard to fool him. And you know who else didn't strike out? And I think struck out less than anybody was Yogi. Berra? Yogi Berra. I mean, it's hard to get a ball by him. He's like this Sanchez here. <laughs> Swing at anything that he could reach. Well, the Yankees, we mentioned, uh, off to their best start, 14 wins. And we, we also mentioned, as a team, they haven't been putting it together offensively. No. So to, to, to win 14 and really struggle uh, offensively and not to having the kind of offense they had most of last year, you got to figure things are going to get a little better. No, you're absolutely right, Bill, because when Winfield and Henderson start hitting the way we know they can, and Mattingly, even though Mattingly's up there around the 300 mark and he got his first home run last year, it bodes well for the Yankees because they have been winning and they're in first place now and they're really hanging tight. I mean, they're doing a great job of team. The defense has been absolutely phenomenal. Now, the other point is uh, they're looking again at Tommy John. You know, I read that in the paper today and it was kind of a shock. I hadn't quite had my coffee yet. And I read that and... Uh, I mean, Tom has uh, got a little mileage. He's a little... Well, he threw here. Evidently, he threw here for Lou Pinella, and Pinella was very happy uh, with uh, with his work. So he's got... Here that, at the stadium? Yeah. In a simulated ball game, and uh, Lou's evidently uh, happy with it. And we talked to Jim Cott er earlier, and he said what they might do is, is since uh, they, they, they might be hurting for pitching coming up pretty soon, is to maybe send uh, someone down to Columbus for a couple of days or a week or whatever and give Tommy John the ball and go with another pitcher. I read where they're going to go with 11 pitches if that happens. I think what I'd do is uh, just say to heck with that 25-man roster. I don't know. 
What? No, wait. Would you explain that 24 and 25? Well, rights? everybody... Is it mandatory? No, it isn't mandatory, but it's a gentleman's agreement. Oh. And everybody has decided they're going to go with 24. And uh, nice. as soon as somebody, uh, they say Baltimore might be the first to, to break the agreement and go with 25, but as soon as somebody does go with 25, I think you'll see everybody yeah, fall everybody in line. But I'm not sure. Since the rules say you can have 25, I don't know why uh, why uh, someone doesn't uh, use 25 people. Well, do you think it's uh, economy uh, kick a little well, bit? Well, you know, I've been uh, talking about this for a while, ever since they started the DH, and, and we kept looking at our, our lineups and looking at our lineups and see that people weren't playing. And I said, I guess, eight or ten years ago, hey, you only need 23. Three, that's it, the, the only amount of people you need. Of course, uh, with that, there is, there is some savings, although that uh, 24th and 25th man will not be in the uh, five or six hundred thousand dollar bracket although uh, some teams have gotten rid of players like that yes. Rudy law for instance with the uh, chicago white Sox, was released and he probably would have stayed there had they they been able to keep 25 uh -huh. but it's uh, probably uh, in the long run it'll be an economy move in the long run it'll be a move that you really don't need that many people in the american league because you have the designated, the designated hit. but in the national league i think with uh, the pinch hitters and with the pitchers having to bat you do need uh, uh, yeah, they're, people. they're moaning over there a little bit. I know Davey Johnson is uh, really unhappy with the 24-man uh, limit thing. You know, a little while ago we were talking about sluggers, and uh, Tom Dunn, the, one of the police officers in the parking lot downstairs, yeah. uh, had read something where he thought Mickey Mantle had made like 70 errors at shortstop when he was in the minor league. And he asked me to look it up. Now, they don't have a statistic as to how many errors Mickey made that year and why they had to put him in the outfield, but he made most of them with throwing. But he gave me a statistic of the most errors in a season since 1900 was 95 by a Cleveland shortstop. John Gotchner, can you believe that? 95. Short, in the big leagues? In the big leagues with Cleveland. He didn't make too many plays, did he? No, 95 <laughs> errors. And it'd be interesting. I know Bobby Mercer started the shortstop, too, because he tried to emulate Mickey Mantle. Both of them started the center field, both from Oklahoma. And fortunately for me, Mickey was put in the outfield, and then Bobby came up as a shortstop, and it was not safe in back of first base. <laughs> he did hit a few fans. <laughs> So Let me ask you something yeah. while you're talking about that. Uh, off the subject of, of errors and shortstops, uh, you're from Jersey. Yes. And uh, there's a little place in Jersey, is it Leonardo? Yeah, New Jersey. Leonardo, yeah. Okay, well, that's uh, Bill Kunkel's hometown. Oh, late Bill yes, Kunkel. yes, yes. And uh, they're going to name a park in Leonardo after a Bill Kunkel. They're going to dedicate it on Saturday. And uh, they'll have Saturday a band there May playing. Third, you're at, right. About 9.45, I think festivities are going to yeah. start at 10. Are you going to be there? Yeah, I'm going to try and be there because that's not too far away. Good. And uh, Bill Kunkel Memorial Park. You know, he was great. I mean, he loved kids besides his own children. He really loved kids, and he, and he was very concerned. And, you know, he was too young to really be taken from us. But I think this is a great thing for them to do. And Bill's son uh, plays, is in the uh, Texas, Texas Ranger, Ranger right. farm system. He played over at Ryder. Right. So uh, if, if the people are around down in that area, it'll probably be a nice uh, event to uh, drop over to the uh, city of Leonardo, New Jersey. Yep. It's in Middleton Township, isn't Middle it? Middleton Township, and right. Middleton Township. And, and uh, the festivity probably will start at 10 o'clock. We're looking out on the field as the ground crew is going back out again. It's almost stopped the raining here completely. And it looks like we'll have more baseball. We'll be in the fourth inning with the Twins leading the 3-0. And they got those three runs on a home run by Kirby Puckett, who's been red hot. He was player of the week last week, and I think he's going to be player of the week again this week. I think he has to be. Well, it doesn't have to be, but I would think the player of the month. Because Willie Randolph was the player of the month for the Yankee magazine. We'll be back right after these messages. 